Particle physics is the science that studies the tiniest constituents of our universe and the forces that hold them together. This video shows some of the equipment that Triumph scientists use to see the basic constituents of matter. Scientists study things of many different sizes. The tools they use depend on the distance scales involved. At the largest scale, astronomers use telescopes to study galaxies, stars, and planets. Orbiting satellites give pictures of the Earth. Things the size of human beings are visible to the unaided eye. Let's take a drop of blood from this blood donor and zoom in with a microscope. An optical microscope uses a beam of visible light and can magnify things about a thousand times. Here's what blood looks like through the optical microscope. Cells are the building blocks of life. These blood cells are about seven micrometers across, about one-tenth as thick as a piece of paper. Optical microscopes use visible light. The wavelength of the light fixes the smallest details that we can resolve. Red light has a long wavelength and low energy. Blue light has a shorter wavelength and higher energy. X-rays and gamma rays have even shorter wavelengths and higher energies. You can't see small details with long wavelengths. Photons of visible light have wavelengths greater than 0.4 micrometers. To see details smaller than this, we need shorter wavelengths and higher energies. To produce shorter wavelengths, you need a larger machine. This seeming inverse relationship is a good rule of thumb. To see details inside the cell, we use an electron microscope, a small particle accelerator. Electrons are accelerated to 100,000 electron volts of energy and much shorter wavelengths than visible light. The electron microscope allows magnification up to about 50,000 times and reveals the organelles inside this liver cell. But we are still a long, long way from seeing an atom. Atoms are much, much smaller and require much shorter wavelengths. A scanning tunneling microscope can magnify about 10 million times, enough to see individual atoms. The spheres here are individual silicon atoms. Silicon is one of the ingredients in sand. There are more atoms in one grain of sand than there are grains of sand on a beach. But even with a scanning tunneling microscope, we still don't have enough magnification to see details inside the atom. This is the Triumph Cyclotron, a 4,000-ton particle accelerator. It accelerates protons to an energy of 500 million electron volts, corresponding to a wavelength of about 10 to minus 15 meters, short enough to study the atomic nucleus. The nucleus of an atom is far smaller than the atom itself. If an atom were enlarged to the size of a football stadium, the nucleus would be like a cherry at the center. Particle accelerators like the Triumph Cyclotron can see things smaller than the atomic nucleus. Our current understanding is that atoms are made of fundamental building blocks called quarks and leptons, held together by four types of force particles called bosons. This is called the standard model of particle physics. The twist experiment at Triumph makes very precise measurements of the properties of the standard model by studying the decay of a subatomic particle called the muon. But the standard model is missing a piece. All the quarks and leptons, and some of the force-carrying bosons, have mass. Without at least one extra particle, called the Higgs boson, the model cannot explain why particles have mass at all. With the Higgs, the standard model even predicts, very precisely, the masses of the bosons. To look for the missing Higgs particle, we must go to even higher energies. The standard model does not describe what happens at extremely high energies, above 1,000 trillion electron volts. So it cannot describe what happened in the first instance after the Big Bang. Some theories, called string theories, try to describe physics at these very high energies and small distances. And these theories predict that there are extra space dimensions. These extra dimensions cannot be like the three dimensions that are familiar in everyday life. Otherwise, they would mess up Newton's laws. But they could be curled up really small or warped in some way so that we cannot normally perceive them. Perhaps some forces are confined to the familiar three dimensions, while other forces can propagate in the extra dimensions as well. The standard model leaves other questions open besides the mass problem and the question of extra dimensions. If the universe came from a Big Bang where energy became mass, there should be as much antimatter as matter. 
we do not detect any. Also, astronomers tell us there is dark matter, which should consist of weakly interacting massive particles. They are not a part of the standard model, so we should look for them in future experiments. They would be a hint of some bigger scheme which would describe physics at higher energies than the standard model. To explore these outstanding questions, scientists have built the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC. It's the biggest microscope in the world, a giant circular particle accelerator with a circumference of 27 kilometers, located on the French-Swiss border near Geneva. It will collide head-on two beams of protons, each with an unprecedented energy of 7 trillion electron volts. Canada, through Triumph, has made over $40 million worth of contributions to the LHC. Twin aperture warm quadrupole magnets for beam injection cleaning, pulse forming networks and injection kicker magnets, ferrite rings, tuning and power supplies for the PS upgrade and booster PS transfer lines, and much more. Canadians helped to build the liquid argon hadron calorimeters in the Atlas particle detector. The cryostat with the NCAP calorimeters weighs 250 tons. The truck has 128 wheels and hydraulic jacks to keep the load perfectly level, so the heavy wheels don't slide along their axis and crash out of the cryostat. The Atlas detector is one of the eyes of the LHC microscope. Its job is to detect and identify the subatomic particles that come spewing out of the proton-proton collisions. The Atlas detector is 25 meters tall, 46 meters long, and weighs about 7,000 tons. It cost half a billion dollars to build. It can detect all kinds of particles coming out of the collisions, measure their charges and energies and directions, and piece together the jigsaw puzzle of what happens in the instants after the protons collide. This lets us reconstruct the exotic ephemeral particles which exist briefly and then decay to standard model particles. Here's a physicist heading up to show us the Canadian end caps. Fortunately, he seems to have come from Vancouver and has brought his climbing gear with him. This would be a pretty cold climb as the calorimeter runs at 84 Kelvin or about minus 189 Celsius. This final image shows a particle physics history of the universe. The very high temperatures and high energies found right after the Big Bang are those that we can explore with the LHC. Time gets more compressed as we move to the right, and we see a rapid evolution through chemistry, biology, the rise and fall of civilizations, and the expansion of the universe. Particle physics underlies everything, but we are more than the sum of our parts. That's why Triumph does other kinds of science, too. <laughs>